Hello, and thank you for joining today's council meeting. So what we've got today is we've got a bunch of assorted stuff. So I've got Zendikar Rising Gift Edition, some Time Spiral Packs, then more of those repacks. I know, I have a problem. So I'll go ahead and open stuff up and get the packs out. And then from there we can open them and, you know, just talk about things. So these Gift Edition bundles, they're kind of fun. Oops, sorry, I'm hitting my camera stand here. So, of course, inside it's got artwork, but it's foily, so I'll put that off to the side. I wish that this one was foily. That would have been kind of fun. One of those, a box for dice, I guess. And then we've got the stuff in here. So these are nice because well, kind of a plain die, so... The other bundles had a sparkly dye. This one's got kind of a plain color. So we've got 10 packs of Zendikar Rising, a collector booster. Then we got, ooh, the foily pack. So I don't know if you can tell the difference there. One of these is curved already, and the other isn't. We'll just put those back in, in here. And of course, the box has foiling on it, which is pretty cool. But the box isn't curling, so take that as you will. So open these up. Super hard to find these. These were ones that I had on order from a online retailer that sells many other things. You could probably guess who. And they got delayed shipping out, so I had to wait. And these got in earlier this week, so I think maybe if I open from the bottom, yeah. I'll get the packs out. Ooh. So all three of the Acroma there. So I really love the Time Spiral. I just, I wish so much that they would do another print run of this. They haven't announced a print run. They're going to release what they have in stock. But that's not even close to the same thing. So. We'll start with these. So I haven't looked at these yet. This is how they came. So I have one that's a revised one. So we'll start there. So Unstable Mutation, Holy Armor, Regeneration, Shatter, Stream of Life, Blow and Mental Blast, which is always fun, Dwarven Warrior, Disintegrate, Crawl Worm, Drain Life, Cursed Land, Onulet, Dwarven Weaponsmith, and Life Lace with the Planes. So I don't think I had anything too pricey there, even with the weird stuff that's going on with old cards where people are buying them, and et cetera, et cetera. So we've got a Legends one here and a Dark. We'll start with the Dark. So we've got Riptide, Goblin Rock Sled, we've got Seven Elves, Goblin Digging Team, Skyward Goblins, The Deep Water, Sunken City, Morale, Scavenger Folk, Squire, Carnivorous Plant, Fasting, uh, Tangle Kelp, Living Armor, and Meow Sylvan. So, kind of a fun card. Just three for a 2-2. Two, two. Four green mana tap to regenerate Tark. To regenerate a target creature. So back in the day when people were playing, good creatures were always like the big thing that people went after because the creatures that were available were garbage. They just they just weren't good. Okay, so we got Keeper of the Faith, three for a two three, Siphon Soul, Flash Flood, Alabaster Potion, Lost Soul, C3 for a 2-1 with Swamp Hawk, Zephyr Falcon, 2 for a 1-1 one, one Flyer, uh, Glyph of Life, Glyph of Reincarnation, Vampire Bats, Pit Scorpion, which was a good one, but it's 3 for 1-1 one, one with Poisonous 1. Then we've got Osai Vultures, Puppet Master, Hyperion Bladesmith, for 
uh, walk hold and teleport. So I think a couple of those uh, cards are, are worth something. We'll have the total up on the screen for each of those and then we'll continue. So let's do some Zendikar Rising. I really like the expeditions for the set and I think that was probably one of the best things as far as opening these boxes because you could get your money's worth. So we got a War Leader, Shadow Singer, Kamal's Fury, and a Sky Clay Relic with Mountain and one of those do-it-yourself proxy cards, which is a whole nother discussion. So I am a paper boomer. I was playing in the 90s. Wish I hadn't sold my collection when I did oh, those duels. But when I got back in, I collected a, a bit over the years and really got back playing. So Thought Thief, Thwart, and Juari with a Sky Slave Apparition. Really got back playing with War of the Spark and have been pretty strong since. But man, some people just like to gatekeep and keep others out of the game. I'd rather play the person rather than their wallet, what they have access to, Concerted Defense, Amara Mystic, and Vastwood Fortification with the Banding Cacophony, and Bane Vale Foil, or our first of the foilies. Because when you're basically doing it based off of what someone can acquire, I mean, yes, there is a deck building aspect to it, but it's not just building the deck, it's actually being able to run. And just because you can afford to have all of these cards because you were playing at the time, it doesn't mean that it's going to be something that works well for everyone. So, I don't know. I don't think we should be gatekeeping. Let's just play the game. It's a game first and foremost. So we got a Relic Vile, a Gortog Knight Runner, Kite Cell Cleric, and a Glass Pool Mimic. Really good rares for the set, and Foily Canopy Bailiff. So, it's just, I've seen a lot of discourse about that, and I, I, one thing I do like about CEDH community is they really are in favor of just playing and having fun, just a little bit too high-powered for my taste. I like it to be more casual, but even in casual, I'm okay with the proxies, and CEDH community is really pro-proxy, and I like that about that community. So we got a Shatter Skull Minotaur, Paratactician. Tangle Floor Hedron and a card that is now banned. So we got an Omnath with four arms. <laughs> so funny. I mean, if I'm playing casual and somebody wants to proxy cards, that's cool. I mean, if they're doing it so they can pub stomp people and play CEDH at a casual table, I mean, they are a jerk, but it's not because they're proxying, it's because they're pub stomping. So... Rule zero, talk with your playgroup about what your expectations for the game are. I just want to have fun and mess with people a little bit, but I'm a weird person. So we got Blood Chief Thirst, Shatter Skull Minotaur, Malachur Rebirth, and a Zagoras. Thief of Heartbeats. So this is not a bad bundle so far. So... I'm, I definitely take a more favorable view of the proxies just because you know, people should be able to play and if yeah, if you're wanting to do restrictions, you can do that still. You can still restrict on a budget, but you set it as everybody restricts to that and it makes the playing field level and you're more likely to have at least the type of games I'm looking for. That's, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Not trying to badmouth CDH or anything, it's just I like to sit down and play for a bit <laughs> and go so fast with their games. So we got a Spring Mantle Cleric, Roosted Drakes, Brushfire Elemental, and a Full Art Gorgeous River Glide Pathway with Scale to Heights as a foil. So, however you play the game, play it. And I, j I just can't stand the gatekeepers, though. There's no reason to do that. There's no reason to be just abusive to people. It makes no sense. So we got a Vine Gecko, Concerted Defense. Ooh, Balagad Recovery is a really good one. Worth more than the rare, which is uh, Yasharn and Placeable Earth. 
That's kind of funny. I mean, there is a monetary aspect to the game, but honestly, despite having a, you know, a modest reserve list position, I would be perfectly fine with that being abolished and stuff reprinted. I mean, they're pieces that people need to play, and some of those cards on the reserve list, like Autumn's Daughter, why is that on the reserve list? Well, just because it was a rare in Fallen Empires after the Chronicles debacle. So, Core Blade Master, Totting Arbor Mage, McKinsey Stampede, and a Nimble Trap Finder. So, I mean, there's a lot that goes into this stuff. I'm just, you know, I'd rather people be able to play. So, that's my main thing. I want to play and have fun. It's, I enjoy the game. I just don't want to play someone's wallet. It's not fun. So Demon's Disciple, Thundering Spark Mage, Kaberi Takedown, and a Taru Paragon to close out that pack. So let me pull these off to the side and lovely new playmat. Check out our website if you want to order some of these. We now offer those as well as other cool merchandise. So you got to go check it out. Find us at lotuscouncil.com. All right. Ooh, starting to curl in the pack. So go through the commons kind of quick and uncommons. We've got a Plains, Ooh. Charix, the Raging Isle, a Crawling Baron's Foil, Kazundu Nectar Pot, Fearless Oops, Fledgling, <laughs> another, another River Glide Pathway, Dread Worm. And we got a Magmatic Chandler Full Art Foil and did not get, we did not get what I was hoping to get. We did not get an Expedition. So, all right, we'll finish up with our time spot. I have a lot to say about this. So I did collect um, one of the sets from this. I collected Planar Chaos. I really wish now that I collected Future Sight because, I mean, just good cards. So I like that they reprinted this. I like that it's available. I just wish it was actually available. So we got Haze of Rage, Mystical Teachings, Conflagrate, Exturpate, and a Cloud Shredder Slipper. So we'll put all the, the rares together and I'll put the time spirals there. So really would have been nice for people to be able to play this. I mean, the boxes... Ooh, Manatai, that's a really good one to get. It's gone down in price, but that's okay. See, I had a lot of that one from when I was collecting. Now it's reprinted and the price has dropped, but you know what? The original printing hasn't dropped as much, and there's a version that's, freely av that's really available for people to play. Best of both worlds. Old carts will always hold value. Because that first printing is always going to be something that's more valuable. So that's just my thought. So Celestial Crusader, Salt Filled Recluse, Bonded Fetch with a Living End Mythic and a Thradagusk. Thradtusk. Cannot pronounce it. So our first Mythic, not a bad Mythic to get. Go through these, Terramorphic, always fun. So we got Premature Burial, a Might Sliver, Imperiosaur, and Life and Limb. Not the spiciest. Ooh, we got an Alicia who smiles at death, and an Insect Token. Really love that card, really great card. So much fun, good story to it too. So, what set would you love to see a remastered version of next? Ooh, Bongify, that's really good. Used to be, you know, a few bucks reprinted. Now it's kind of available. Riftwing, Cloudscape, Molen Slag Heap with um, Mirari the Cursed. And an Evolutionary Leap. And a Simeon Spirit Guide. Well, also have a decent amount of Simeon Spirit Guides. I'm fine with it getting reprinted. It now means that people can play the card. Again, it's that whole, I want to play the player, not their wallet. Okay. 
So we've got a Fire Maw Cavu, Old Might, Might of Old Carosa, a Riptide Pilferer, Angel's Grace, and a Quisali Pride Mage. Not saying that one yet. So getting back to the discussion of what set you would love to see remastered, the big one that I want to see remastered, I want to go back to Shadowmoor Lorewind. I collected Shadowmoor. I kind of started on the Lorewind Morning Tide and Even Tide sets, didn't finish them. I'm coming back and, and circling back and trying to finish those. I just absolutely love those sets. Strong Cold Rats, Salted Salt Crusted Steep Harmonic Sliver, Teleria West, and an Ancient Den. So I think revisiting those would be absolutely just fantastic. And those cards, I do have quite a bit of Shadowmoor. If they reprint, I'm okay. Those cards only have as much value as they do because at the time there was a recession, limited print run, didn't do as well. It, it's artificial scarcity based off of outside events. It's not because the cards are absolutely the best thing in the world. Although that set, those sets did have really good designs, they're fun to come back to and play with now. It, it's just outside events influence. Kind of like the pandemic's doing right now. Some of the standard sets, I don't think they've been opened as much, even though they got some good stuff in there. So we're seeing Theros Beyond Death shoot up in price and boxes of that sell out everywhere. There's some really good cards in there. The expected value for a box is pretty good. So we got a uh, Yixla Jailer, Delay, Delay as I'm talking, Mycologist, Anna Hartwood, Storyteller, with the Tessacar, the Golden Fang. Ooh, ooh, ooh boy. We've got Lavina, Azorius Renegade, Shifted Foil. Put that one there for its own little pile. Ooh, actually, Always have sleeves. I'm going to sleeve that immediately because I don't know what's going to happen with the the foiling on these time shifted ones. It's still straight, and it's a different foiling process where it's the outer edge. But man, the other foils—they are just curling, and I don't exactly live in a very humid environment. I'm out in the desert. Love this card for Suspend. Okay, so we got a Fire Maw Cavu again, a Might Sliver again, Joda's Avenger, Mangara of Corindor, and a Monastery Swift Spear. Not a bad one to get. That's going to be the highlight of the video, I think. So, there we go. So we got Pendlehaven Elder, Dusk Rider Peregrine, Primal Force Mage, a Reiterate, and a Sorceress Spyglass. I mean, being a paper boomer and all, I love the old frames. And just, mm, I can understand why they do the, old, the new frames, because it makes it a little bit more accessible for people to read. But the old frames, they just they hit differently. So we got, oh, I love Brute Force. It's basically the red version of Giant Growth, which is fantastic. If you're doing something like playing Golgari, or not Golgari, sorry, um, Gruel. Sorry, I got my second dose today and my brain's a little bit sleepy. So we got Fungal Reaches, Smallpox, Conflagrate, Angel of Salvation, and a Trigoron Predator. So not too, too shabby. Two more packs left. Oops. Can't get the pack open. Okay. Wipe away. Careful consideration. Dormant sliver. Restore balance. And a solemn simulacrum. So, one more shot to get something good. We'll see what we hit here. I mean, there's a few cards that would be nice to have. I can always use... A damnation or a 
another sliver um, the sliver legion that's always a good one so we got lightning axe dark heart sliver landlord mentor coalition relics good and a laboratory maniac so I think we did okay for the box we did okay oh just so gorgeous might want to build this as a commander Yeah. Such a great one for stacks. So evil. Well, thank you for joining us today. Hopefully this was a fun opening for you. If you're on the lookout for cards, go ahead and check out our sponsor of our Geekified. You can find both sealed product as well as singles and geeky supplies for all of your geeky needs. If you enjoyed the video go ahead and subscribe hit that bell notification and you can join us in our discord to find out when we're meeting next we also do a lot of cool stuff we've got box breaks that we do and other fun activities as a group we do a lot of uh, webcam gameplay so hopefully this was enjoyable and we'd love to see you at the next one so thank you all for coming today and the meeting is now adjourned we hope you have a fantastic day